Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kali Nari, and on here we talk about various different fragrances. But today's topic is going to be about some new Middle Eastern fragrances that I've had the opportunity to smell. If that sounds interesting to you, then please stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscription button and notification and that way you will never miss anything that I post. Stay tuned. very first one is called Badem Isam. This is a gorgeous unisex fragrance. It leans a little feminine in the opening, but then it becomes more unisex when it gets to the base. This fragrance has beautiful notes of saffron, rose, white flowers, uh, carbonian oud, musk, and amber. To my nose, I get a soft floral that is surrounded in a cloud of luxury and sophistication. This scent is uh, very rich and delicate, rich but yet delicate, let me say that. Sweetness and it has a creaminess to it. Uh, it was very warming on my skin. I did find that the base was intense, so you would have to like oud to wear this fragrance, but the amber is absolutely amazing. This one is gonna call Zara Q. That's the name I'm gonna give it. Uh, for me, it was a feminine fragrance. This was like almost like an innocent, delicate, seductive fragrance, but yet feminine. This one was not unisex to me. It was very soft and luxurious in the opening. The notes of it was almond blossom. It had clementine, peony, jasmine, it had amber, benzoin, and vanilla. Now the hints of amber blossom and the clementine mixed together made it a very translucent floral experience on my skin. It was very feminine and elegant. The bright notes of, of the clementine lasted throughout the fragrance, gave you a very uh, fresh and citrus-like aroma. But the garden note, that jasmine note, came in and hung around, right? So the peony and the jasmine made it very much a floral fragrance. And then the amber and benzoin was like almost getting a nice hug from a fragrance. This is a fragrance to me of someone who likes to give out hugs. I can see them wearing this fragrance. This one is called Rose Noir. But I must admit, there is a fragrance that this reminds me of, and I want to say it's called Perfume Easter by Bond Number no. 9. I'm not 100% positive if that's what they were going for, but that's the vibe that I got, right? But nevertheless, Rose Noir is a stunning feminine fragrance with a soft nuance of rose and jasmine. It does embody elegance. This is a powerhouse fragrance, uh, so keep that in mind. This fragrance will greet you, will be in the room before you get to the room, right? So the notes in this one is orange, jasmine, ginger flower, vanilla, salt, amagris, wormwood, and sandalwood. So this is not your typical rose right so it's not um for those who are not comfortable with rose as a fragrance this is for someone who is very uh fond of rose it is a very deep warm rose with salt notes and a little vanilla in the background drop of it but the salty sea note uh that's in it is almost like sun-kissed skin with an undertone of sandalwood which makes it a lot deeper and complex However, there is a greenish note to it. I think that's why it reminds me of Perfume Easter by Bond Number no. 9. Okay, this one is called Supreme. Uh, it was one of my favorites, to be truthfully honest. This one is such a gorgeous fragrance. Um, 
upon first wear, I said this was feminine, right? But then after wearing it, I said, no, it could be worn by both men and women. However, a man would have to like a fruity, rosy note, like almost like a fruity floral. Supreme has notes of rose flower, pear, floral notes, rose, musk, amber, recent, and white musk. To me, though it linked feminine, I, I, like I said before, a man could actually pull this off uh, if he's into that more soft, fresher note because it's very intoxicating. Um, this It gives you this fresh, delectable, sweet, but yet tart freshness to it. Uh, the transition from fruity nuance uh, to a floral blossom is actually quite smooth. It seductively has a hint of rose, um, but the notes in it in that mid part is what makes it so wearable like a unisex fragrance because it's the floral notes and that fruity notes is really undetectable. So I really did enjoy this one. The last one was a little challenging for me, I must admit. It's called Camila Gardens. This one was a unisex fragrance, but I felt like it was more masculine. Um, it had soft leather accords in it that would draw you in, uh, but it had a very velvet-like um, nuance to it. The notes in it is leather, fresh fruits, patchouli extract, amber oud, woody, woodiness, and um, an asterisk of vetiver. And I wanna say it was that note that, that kind of made it a little hard for me. But it has fruity, um, a fruity opening, so there's a sweetness that has an undercut of a fresh flower, very um, close to like being in a, in a garden after a good rain, right? But then it turns into this edgy, dark fragrance, almost like an enchanted forest type darkness. Um, I really think that it's the patchouli that comes up. It's very earthy. Um, it has a bit of sweetness to it, but the earthiness does stay around a little bit longer. The hints of leather that continues to dance through this fragrance and sit on your skin along with the woody accords, they fuse very well. It's what's leading me to believe this would be gorgeous on a man. Because that amber oud and veteranness that's in the base and like throughout the fragrance is quite intense, but yet captivating. I hope you have enjoyed my review today. It was about a Middle Eastern fragrance that was sent out to me. Some of them were wins for me and some of them were missed. But I hope that you found one that you can probably decide to get into in the description is a link to the website. I hope you use it. And on that note, I would like to tell you have a wonderful day, a wonderful night, and I will see you in the next video.